got a little Capture One tutorial for you guys. In this video, I want to take a look at the color editor. The color editor is a really powerful tool that you can use just to isolate specific colors in your image to make adjustments to those. So for instance, if you just want to target all the reds in an image, or if you want to target all the yellows, or let's say you want to target the skin tones, Capture One gives you an enormous amount of power and a lot of options as far as what you can do with these for color matching, for just changing the look of your image, whatever it is that you want to do. This is part of an ongoing tutorial series that I'm doing that is sponsored by Capture One. And if you're interested in learning more, I've got a whole link of videos in the show description that I will share with you guys. And if you've never used Capture One, make sure you download the free trial. You get 30 days to try it out. You can work along with some of these videos and see if it's right for you. But let's talk about the color editor. Best we just jump right in. So I have an image up here that we're going to do some modifications to. This is a sunflower. This is very basic. There's just two colors going on here. But I want to get a feel for what we're doing without overcomplicating things. So if you want to get to the color editor, what you're going to do is go up to your tabs over here. You're going to select the color tab, which is the one with the three circles here. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you will see the color editor. And there are three different sections here. We're going to go through these. There's the basic color editor. We have an advanced color editor. And then we also have one that's just specific for skin tones. But we're going to start with basic. This had a nice overhaul in Capture 120. It is super easy to use. There's a little tool here at the bottom. It looks like an eyedropper. You're going to select that. And that is the color tool. And so if I go over to my image, we have this image of a sunflower. And what we're looking at here is we've got yellows in here and greens. We've also got whites. But let's look at the colors here. If I just grab the yellows here and I move my mouse to the left or right while clicking, I'm going to be able to change the hue. So if I want to make that more red, it gets almost cartoonish all the way over. I can slide it to the left. If I want to make it lean to more towards green, I'm going to move it to the right. I'm still holding the mouse down, but if I go up and down here, I'm going to adjust the saturation. So if I want more saturation, you move it up. If you want to desaturate, you move down. And so that's some real power that you get just by clicking and dragging the mouse. Another key variation to this is lightness. And we use a modifier for this. What you're going to do is hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC. And this will allow a little bit different modification because now when I move the slider right to left, I control the lightness. So if I want that to be a lighter yellow, I I can move it to the right. If I want it to be darker, I can move it to the left. And this is all interactive. So while still holding down the mouse, or in my case, the Wacom pin, I can let go of the Option key, and I'm back into my hue. And you can move it up and down for saturation. And this is really fun to play around with because you can get really fast at fine tuning your colors. And then we have added one color to this. Let's now work with the greens. And to do that, we still have the color editor selected, which is that little eyedropper. I'm just going to select the greens now. And if I select that, I can move that around and I can make my greens lean more towards yellow. I can also bring them back out more towards a bright green here. And then same with saturation. If I move the mouse up and then if I go down, I can desaturate. We have now done some major modifications using the basic color editor tool. You can also just go in and move the sliders. To do that, what you would want to do is just select the color. So in this case, let's say it's yellow. And then I would go in here and you can see the edits that I've already made. And I can make changes to those. Everything is really easy. Let me give you a little use case for this technique. So this whole ability to direct select color in an image and make changes based on that is very powerful. Powerful, especially if you're doing something like artwork reproduction or product photography, where the colors really do need to look like they look in real life. And so maybe you're working from one image and you're trying to match color from another. And so the easiest way to do this is just to select two images so you get a heads up in Capture One. The way I do it is I have my first image selected. This is the one that I took. The second image I actually didn't take. This was an image taken by Irving Penn. All I do is I hold down the command key and I click that image too. And you can have a bunch of images selected up here. But but I just want a heads up so I can look at one image and kind of try to get my image to match this. Now, I am a huge fan of all of the work of Irving Penn. I love the analog look that he got. This is part of the series of color work that he was doing for magazines at the time. And color palettes are very similar. So how can I make changes on mine just visually to appear more like the work that Penn did that was all analog, mine's digital. So I will show you. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have this box checked up here that says Edit Selected. Now, which image is selected? Well, my image is selected here on the left because it's got this bar around it when you see the border. If I want the other image selected, I just click on it on the thumbnail or you can click on it direct on the screen. Either way, that is the image you will be making adjustments to. So I want to make sure that I have my image selected. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these yellows. Well, it looks like we have a little more brightness, a little more contrast, a little more uh, bit of saturation in there. So what I'm going to do is grab the color editor tool. I'm just going to grab in the yellow and I'm going to bring my saturation up by clicking and dragging upwards. 
It's looking pretty good. And I'm going to move the hue a little more towards orange. I'm totally eyeballing this, but that looks a lot closer. And the other thing I could do, you can use the option here. You can also just use the slider. I'm going to bring my lightness up just a little bit because it is brighter in my target image. Let's go ahead and move that hue over a little bit more. And it's starting to look a little closer. Now let's work with the greens. I basically just grab the tool. I'm going to select in the green area anywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, let's increase the saturation a little bit, maybe a little too hot. Use the option key. I'm going to bring the lightness up because it's definitely a lighter green over in my target image. And also the hue starts leaning a little more towards yellow here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down manually here. And I'm starting to get something that's a little more close. If you want to do a quick before and after, I hold down the option key and click reset up at the top. And you're going to see that that looks a lot better and closer to the image that I'm trying to match. So you could work on this as much as you want and get as specific as you want. It's a very powerful tool. And we're just in the basic color editor. Let's check out the advanced editor. We'll use a different image for this example, something with a little more color range to it. And this one fits the bill because we got a lot of range in our flowers back here. We've got skin tones with our model. There's a lot going on. We've got greens in the leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some edits to this and we're going to use the advanced color editor. So to find that, if you go back to the color editor tool, we're going to select advanced, which is the second tab. And we start with a blank slate. The first thing we're going to do is grab the little eyedropper tool here for the color editor tool. We're going to go over and just select a color. So for instance, let's say that I want to select the greens in the foliage back here. So I'm going to select a green and it's going to pop that onto the color wheel. And it also puts it into this list. And this list is kind of key because it keeps track of our edits. And once I start adding more colors, like for instance, let's say I want to add lavender in there or I want to add reds, uh, it continues to add those to the list. And so if I want to go back and edit my greens, I can just select them and pick up where I left off. You can add up to 30 colors, I believe in here. It is very powerful. So the other thing you need to understand is this color wheel and what it is that we've just selected. So it's really important to remember that in photography, that color becomes very complex. You see a range of colors. Colors aren't just flat all the time. I mean, I guess they could be, but generally speaking, in real life, colors are not flat. When you look at skin tones, for example, if you look at a flower petal or a leaf, you see a wide range of varying saturations. You see a wide range of maybe varying hues. They're all similar, but it adds that complexity that makes it look realistic. So what we've done here when we selected a green point or a skin tone or a red point is what it did is it actually made a selection of a color range. So if you look over here, now there are four sliders below this color wheel and you probably understand what hue, saturation, and lightness do. Exactly what you think. If I want to really make these greens saturate, what I'm going to do is grab the saturation and pull it all the way up and they become obnoxiously green and neon. Let's undo that for a second. It's also important to remember the smoothness slider up here. And what this is going to do is if you look at the color wheel, you see this little blur area in here. If I move that down, you're going to see that that goes away. And if I move it to the right here or up, you can see that it intensifies it. What that does is it actually adds a little bit of smoothing around the color range that you've selected. And this is important too, because if you have two kind of similar color ranges, they can start to conflict. And so what we want is we don't want weird hard lines and stuff because something's oversaturated and something's not. So this is going to smooth things out. So that's an important thing to remember. Another key tool here is if we want to note what we have selected, you can take this box at the bottom that says view selected color range. I'm going to turn that on. And what it does is it turns the image pretty much black and white and only shows colors of what we've selected. So I'm not too worried about this green range here. It pretty much did an excellent job of selecting greens. So I'm going to turn that off and I can make my edits knowing that it's not going to drift into my subject or any of the other flowers. And let's say that I want to bring my hue over and make it a little more yellow. Maybe I want to make it darker. You have a lot of options here. I can bring my saturation up if you want to just make it pop a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Smoothness looks good. And so let's do a quick before and after. So here's before. Here's after I have targeted the greens in my image. Let's say that I want to deal with something like this lavender color, and this is going to add another layer of complexity. So let's go over here. I'm going to select the lavender that I selected earlier, and let's go ahead and tick that box so we can see what it selected. And it did a pretty good job, just the color range in here. And if I deselect that for a second, let's say maybe I want to target the lavender, but I want it to drift into these blues, and those are neighboring colors, so that should be pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and select our view color range here. And what I'm going to do is just manually click and drag this down here. I'm going to bring this down into the blue territory and you're going to see that it starts adding some color into our blue flowers over here too. So this looks really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and deselect that and let's go ahead and work with that a little bit. I'm going to bring some saturation in there 
probably too much. Saturation gets out of hand real fast, especially when you're being selective. You can move your hue around too, maybe make them a little more. Yeah, let's lean them that way, and then let's take the lightness down. Make them a little bit more dark so they're not conflicting with our model. Bring the saturation back in a little bit. So I'm totally eyeballing this, but a quick before and after. So we can do before, after, and I've got an image that's starting to pop a little more. I'm not crazy about those greens, but if I want to go back and edit them, I just simply grab the green selection and I can turn my saturation down. No big deal. You just pick right up where you left off. So again, you can add up to 30 colors in here and it gets very powerful in terms of what you want to do. So I want to show you another option now, which is actually being able to select skin tones. So to work on skin tones, what we're going to do is go back to the color editor here and we're going to select the third tab, which says skin tone. And we now have a blank slate again and we have our little eyedropper tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a skin tone, probably off her cheek here. We'll go ahead and select that. And now we have a point of which to start working. Now, again, we can view selected color range only and we can see that our model is selected, but oh, we got a problem here. If you look in the back, we have in this image a problem with these flowers. And so any edits that I'm going to make to skin tones are actually gonna cover those flowers too. So we have a little bit of a challenge here where we want to work on our subject, but we don't want that to affect other areas in the image. And so the best way to do this is to use a masking layer. We've covered these in previous videos. I'll link up here somewhere if you want to know more on masking. What this allows us to do is just mask out part of the image that we want to affect. There's a really easy way to do this when you're using the color editor tool. You can just make a mask from a selected color range. That's what we've been doing. We've been selecting color ranges. So I could just make a mask that targets all the greens, or I can make a mask that targets, in this case, skin tones. And then what I can do is actually erase parts of the mask of areas that I don't want to be affected. Let me show you how to do that. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab the eyedropper once again, because I moved this around. I'm going to go grab the cheek again here. That looks pretty good. And we're going to just make a layer out of this. So if you go over to the color editor tab, the three dots for the extra options here, the second one down says create masked layer from select we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to take just a couple seconds and we are going to get a brand new layer up here. And this just says layer one. Let's go ahead and relabel this so we know what it is and call it a skin tone. And we're going to work off of that layer. So we've got a layer here, but where's the mask? Well, if you press the letter M on the keyboard, stands for mask, it's going to show you in red where the mask was created. Now, remember, I just gave it a basic skin tone range, but unfortunately, all these other areas were included in that. So what I want to do is grab the eraser tool. It's on the top here. You can press the letter E on the keyboard. And I'm going to get the eraser tool. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. I'm not that big. And I'm going to go ahead and just start erasing parts of the image that I don't want to be affected. So what is going to be affected is just what's under the red. And in this case, I'm going to leave our model. So I'll go through. This doesn't have to be neat and absolutely perfect, but uh, I do want to make sure that it doesn't touch any of those flowers over there. We can also exclude her hair from this equation. There's not a lot of skin tones going on in there, but it probably did have some red highlights in it or some pinkish highlights at least probably from the white balance, but I'll go ahead and do all this erasing here. And I'm going to apologize to Julie now for making her look like a demon. But uh, anyway, this is what we're dealing with. We want that red area. That is the mask. And what I've done is I pretty much made sure that I've got all my flowers out of that mask. I also brought all the hair out of the mask, the eyes and the lips. And so if I press the letter M on the keyboard again, she won't look nearly as bad. But now we have a mask that any edits will only affect this. So when I make changes to the skin tones, I'm not going to be running into flowers and stuff. So what we're going to do is grab the eyedropper tool and I'm just going to grab a little part of her cheek once again. Now if you look down under the color wheel here we have basically two sets of three tools and these kind of interactively work with one another and so uniformity is the one I want to start with actually even though it's below. Now uniformity is going to deal with how uniform you want these edits to be across skin tones. This is really important because like even you're looking at my face right now and I've got some shadows going on and a lot of blemishes and stuff so what we want to do is we want to smooth out the skin tones so we take care of some of that, but we also don't want it to look too fake or too plastic or too uniform. So these kind of work interactively with the other three sliders, which are going to be hue, saturation, and lightness. And so you could be in a situation where your model was poorly lit and you need a lot of saturation and lightness to come through. It, just every situation is going to be different, but notice that you can adjust the uniformity. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to saturate the skin tones just a little bit. So let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to bring my hue and I'm going to go back this way just a little bit and let's bring the lightness up. 
And now with uniformity, I can change and I can bring the hue. And you're going to notice that if I bring all these all the way up, hue, saturation, and lightness, she's going to look real phony real fast. And that is not a good look. See, we've taken out all of the, uh, <laughs> the shadows and any of the details, and it just doesn't look right. So what I want to do is actually, especially with saturation and hue, is bring those down. You can go high with them. I just wouldn't go all the way. A little bit goes a long way with this. So this is looking pretty good. Bring a little more saturation in there. These are very subtle edits, but I've got all the skin tones, including her arms hit. So if I want to do a quick before and after, here's before and here's after. And you can see that sometimes it becomes really intense really quickly. So you might want to actually do some before and after and pull back if you are a little hot on things. It's just like anything else. Yeah, see, it still looks a little too a little too uniform so i'm going to bring that down just a little bit but now we're getting something that we can actually work with so the way that i approach color in post-production is basically there's two types of edits that i'll be doing there are global adjustments and then there's local adjustments global adjustments are going to be things more like white balance or maybe curves adjustments and even though you're tweaking the color maybe you're adding a little bit of toning to shadows or highlights or maybe you're just changing the white balance you're changing color but it's in a way that affects the entire image so anything with a certain yellow light to it and highlights is all going to change for instance this is a localized color editing and this is being able to just direct select a color now generally speaking subtlety is key here you can get out of control really fast but this is really good when you need to do something subtle that just matches something and gets a little bit tighter and of course capture one gives you an enormous amount of control over this and i really love the layer option because images are complex and as we saw in this example with skin tones you run into problems where you have the same color range going on in flowers so being able able to just create a mask out of a selected color range saves a ton of time and then I can just go erase the parts I don't need and move on. So anyway, I would love to know what you guys think. Don't forget to download a trial version of Capture One if you haven't tried it yet. The link is below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.